Welcome in, VR. We're so excited to have you today. We have VR Small, the founder and executive director of the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, so just to get started, and also out of my own curiosity, <laughs> uh, tell us how Women Veterans Day on June 12th actually came to be. Oh my goodness. So Women's Veterans Day was something that a number of female veterans throughout Texas have been working on actually since around 2014. They have been advocating for things for veteran women. Um, I returned to Dallas in 2015 and I started the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center. And we were in Austin advocating for the center and meeting with the different representatives. And we had the opportunity to meet with Representative Victoria Nieves. Um, wow. She wanted to start a Women Veterans Advisory Committee, and she was also talking about doing Women's Veterans Day. Now, I don't know if you know or not, but we do have a Women's Veterans Week on the book doing Women's History Month. Um, That's but no one, amazing. No one really knew about it, and nothing was being done. But Women's Veterans Day on June 12th is in recognition of the 1948 Women's Armed Services Integration Act that was signed by President Truman. And that act allowed women to be regular members of the military because before we could volunteer doing war, but then we were not receiving any benefits. We couldn't sign back up again. It was only available to us during wartime. How so groundbreaking. It's kind of to do it. yeah. Well, it's so groundbreaking. And the fact that it just kind of slips through the cracks and no one really knows, uh, you guys are now bringing this to light. So this is amazing, amazing. It's so important. I cannot Absolutely. tell you how many times I meet women veterans just throughout the week. And I'll say, okay, do you know what June 12th is? And they look at me very perplexed and say, uh, no. <laughs> so we really, really need to get the word out there because this is amazing. Texas is one of only four states in our nation that has a Women's Veterans Day. Wow. Of we need to make that all the states. Absolutely. We need to change that. And we're slowly doing it. Thank you. Oh, because of VR Small. Um, so with so many um, issues facing women veterans, why the focus on women veteran owned businesses, in your opinion? Well, actually, I was working on a project here when I moved called Roll Call that was sponsored by the Texas Veterans Commission's uh, Women's Veterans Program. And I was responsible for the entrepreneurial component. And when I was doing my research, I found that in Dallas, there wasn't a lot of programs for women businesses in general, but yeah. there was nothing for women veteran entrepreneurs. And it just made me dig deeper. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Census Survey of Business Owners that's issued every year that ends in the two and the seven. Well, the 2012 report showed that women veterans grew from 4% of all veteran-owned businesses to 15.7%. Wow. That was nearly wow. 400,000 new businesses, and nothing was happening. I mean, a little media blurb, uh, some recommendations in the government industry, but no real support was put in place. And the National Women's Business Council recommended as early as 2015, we do more research, we create more programs to help this population who is showing a real interest in small business. So I wanted to look at what we had. We had a lot of online programs, but most of them were based on the East Coast. And the big businesses are this way. Yeah. You know, the largest groups of veteran women entrepreneurs, Texas has the second largest group. Uh, California has the largest group, and then we have New York and Florida. So we needed more programs this way. And that kind of sparked this whole concept of what can we do, what's trending, what do we need? And that kind of gave the groundwork for the Veteran Women's Enterprise. Well, and that percentage differential from 4 to 15 That's percent huge. is massive. I know. Wow. Wow. It's so eye-opening because it's outpaced, right here in our backyard. We outpaced the fastest growing group of women-owned businesses during that time period. And veteran-owned um, men businesses, they were declining. Wow. But no one was talking about it. So we've got to turn up the volume. Yes, we do. I agree there. Well, we know that there are a number of SBA, VA, and other governmental programs to support women veterans. Um, what's special or unique about the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center? Well, one of the reasons why I named it the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center is because I wanted women veteran to know this is for you. We have a lot of programs, and we use the terminology veteran, and a lot of women don't self-identify. They know that why they that? served. There's a lot of different assumptions. It hasn't really been researched well. But some of the assumptions are, one, they think if they didn't deploy, they're not actually a quote-unquote veteran. Uh, the other thing is a lot of women just feel like there's nothing in this for me for saying that I'm a veteran because, you know, people don't yeah. get all excited when we say they're veterans. Like, oh, you served? And some people may even say, oh, why did you do that? As if 
we shouldn't have served. Yeah. So yeah. rather than have to explain yourself, rather than take on all of and a lot of the negative connotation around PTSD and yeah. other things that are associated with being a veteran, women just decide, look, I've served, I'm very honored, and I'm proud of my service, but I'm not sure all of the people in the civilian community get it, and so I'm not going to shine this light. Unless someone asks, us, and you really have to ask the right question, you have to say, did you serve in the military, not are you a veteran? That's interesting, the psychology behind it both is. of those. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I love the name. It's so strong. It's like, <laughs> yes, I am. I'm a woman veteran, and, and this is my enterprise center. I awesome. love it. I love it. It, it represents everything that you're trying to convey and stand for. I Thank love that. Um, so speaking of, what type of services does the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center offer? Well, we build our services around what we call our CEO suite of services. And it's really just an acronym for what we provide. So C looks at our female-focused co-working space. We also have a beautiful conference center uh, that seats up to 50 women auditorium style, 26 uh, tables and chairs. We have a cafe lounge that I'm very proud of. That is our network hub uh -huh. where the women can get Sounds together like it. <laughs> and talk about great things. Um, we even created an engagement room because we're very committed to mentoring. I'm a SCORE mentor. We're a SCORE site right now. And so we really want the women to know that if you need that one-on-one, -on -one, if you want to get connected, we want to be able to provide that type of wow. service to them. And that's so vital to have that mentorship, to it have is. that camaraderie, to it have, is. hey, you know, I've been in your shoes. I've walked your walk. I got you. Let's talk. You and know? then our E is our enrichment programs. And so those programs are designed to look specifically at issues that affect women in the military with a focus on work-life balance. And there's some really interesting articles that just came out recently about the importance of mental health in the workplace. We're Absolutely. finally getting it. That work-life balance is very critical. Well, it's interesting. You just said something that kind of piqued my interest. Mm -hmm. Specifically, issues surrounding women in the military how do they, you were just saying, balancing all that, how would you say that's different than, say, um, someone that's male that's in the military versus what females have to go through? Well, one of the things about being in the military as a woman is that we're taught to be equals. So mm -hmm. we don't have the unbalance that you see in the, the civilian world. Yeah. When we come in, we're expected to be able to do the same thing our brothers in arms do. We're expected to meet those same uh, qualifications. So we, we dress very conservative. Our uniform is meant to be something that all of us look the same because we're one team. Uh, the guys like to say we're all green, and we are. And so we have a different mentality and a different focus on how to address issues and challenges. And then when you come into the civilian world, that can be seen as a negative. Yeah. You can be seen as aggressive. Aggressive, abrasive. You can be seen as, you know, over uh, confident. Mm -hmm. So when you come back as a veteran, you're really struggling with all of these things was a positive when I was in the military, yeah. and now I'm out of the military, and, and there seems to be all these little negative vibes uh, that are creeping up around you. Well, and in, uh, me personally, I'm thinking, well, how would I integrate myself back into just my girlfriend life? Like, with my girls not thinking, whoa, what is her deal? Like I mean, Exactly. There is such a different, you're right, I mean, it's, it's such a different completely change of life when you come back to civilian life anyway but with women I feel like just because of the our makeup it's different and and PTSD is real Absolutely. you know when we had that incident in Nevada that was yeah. 10 minutes yeah. of someone shooting and carrying yeah. on um this is months and years for some people yeah. of having those types of activities yeah well I mean I can sit here forever with you VR this is such a great <laughs> cause um it's a tremendous cause and I know we've got viewers watching right now going how can I get involved to volunteer or donate VR tell me so what can they do so first off they can get involved by volunteering we're always in need of volunteers at the center uh, second we really need to connect with more of our corporate uh, partners because we need that executive support in the nonprofit industry that is so key and so my area of expertise is organizational development and program planning but I'm not an expert in technology I'm not an expert in marketing right. so connecting with those organizations that want to give back they want to be able to make an impact they can get connected with us as a volunteer or as a partner and of course every nonprofit needs funding oh funding <laughs> yes. funding yes, every yes, nonprofit yes. needs funding well that website is veteranwomensec.org again that's veteranwomensec.org vr small founder and executive director of the veteran women's enterprise center thank you so much for joining us oh, today thank you. and thank, thank you. you for what you're doing oh thank you again